President Biden on Capitol Hill today for a St. Patrick's Day event, which is coming up this weekend, as Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer faces huge backlash over his comments on Benjamin Netanyahu, suggesting that the country needs to change its leadership, saying he's a major obstacle to peace and saying that Israel should hold, quote, new elections after the threat of Hamas is radically reduced. Here's the reaction today, very interesting reaction from President Biden. Watch. Senator Schumer uh, contacted my staff, my senior staff, he's going to make that speech. And uh, he, uh, I'm not going to elaborate on a speech. He made a good speech, and I think he uh, expressed a serious concern shared not only by him, but by many Americans. Hmm. Okay, let's break that down. Uh, and who better to do this with than former Vice President Mike Pence, founder of Advancing American Freedom, who just visited Israel a couple of months ago. He's been there many times and spoken to um, the prime minister and the leadership there many times as well. Um, Mr. Vice President, good to have you with us. Thank you very much for, for joining for us today. On. So what, you know, the, you've seen this whole back and forth, right? Uh, Senator Schumer suggested that it was time for there to be new leadership in Israel. He's kind of stepped that back a little bit after that fiery floor speech. Here's what he said today or yesterday, I guess, on this. The U.S. cannot dictate the outcome of an election. That is for the Israeli public to decide. As for democracy, Israel has the right to choose its own leaders. And he goes on there. But that was after he got a lot of pushback from McConnell and others. But President Biden just suggested he just said it was a good speech. Martha, I started the year uh, visiting a kibbutz in southern Israel that was struck on October 7th by Hamas and the, the worst attack on the Jewish people uh, since the Holocaust. Uh, and there should be only one message coming from the United States of America today, and that is America stands with Israel. Israel is in a fight for its very survival. And the idea that the Democrat majority leader in the United States Senate uh, would take to the floor of that story chamber uh, and start to dictate what the leadership of our most cherished ally Israel should be is a disgrace. Uh, and frankly, I, I'm, I'm almost as offended uh, by the fact that President Biden called it a good speech. I mean, there's this old, this old doctrine that America should speak with one voice. Uh, and that, of course, is always the voice of the president of the United States. And and for President Biden not to not to pull back uh, on uh, uh, on what Chuck Schumer said uh, is astonishing. Uh, it's a, it is a an example, uh, ironically, of a Democrat leader in America trying to engage in election interference in Israel. And uh, the the people of Israel, I can tell you, having been there, Martha, are are completely united behind the goal and the objective of destroying. Hamas uh, and the United States of America should send no other message than we are with you all the way until Hamas is destroyed once and for all. Well, it's interesting that, you know, you look at some of the polls and the impact and what we've seen on social media and we've seen in some of the primary elections in Michigan in particular, which has a large uh, Arab population. Right. Um, and no doubt these polls are not lost on President Biden. Among 18 to 34 year olds in Michigan, he is uh, 11 points lower than former President Trump and 25 points lower than uh, Governor Whitmer, who is popular in Michigan. Do you think that election politics um, are, are bending Biden's will, President Biden's will on this? It's, it's hard to imagine any other motivation here than, than uh, some concern about the elections and, and their own coalition in the Democratic Party. But I'm telling this is war, Martha. I mean, literally, I, you know, I walked through houses that were the walls were riddled uh, with bullet holes and there was a blood stained furniture. We heard, I heard stories of the most horrific torture and massacre of men, women and children. Uh, and what Israel is doing today, uh, we should support. I mean, imagine uh, if, if some Western nation uh, several months after 9-11 had called for a change uh, of leadership uh, at the White House here in our country. Number one, we wouldn't have listened to them. Uh, and number two, we would have been deeply offended by it. So I, I look, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear Senator Schumer has walked back his statement a bit, but I, I, I want to see President Biden walk it back as well and make it clear that if the world knows nothing else, the world should know this. 
America stands with Israel. Let me ask you this. We have not spoken since former President Trump uh, sewed up the nomination, which he did earlier this week. Mm -hmm. And he has received endorsements from some of the people who were running against him. But we have not heard from you. Will you be endorsing your former president? Uh, you were on the ticket with him last time around. Well, Martha, I appreciate the question. And it should come as no surprise that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump this year. Look, I, I'm incredibly proud of the record of our administration. It was a conservative record that made America more prosperous, more secure, uh, and, and saw conservatives appointed to our course in a more peaceful world. Uh, but uh, th that being said, during my presidential campaign, I made it clear that there were profound differences uh, between me and, and President Trump on a range of issues. Uh, and, and not just uh, our difference on my constitutional duties that I exercised on January the 6th. I mean, as, as I have watched his candidacy unfold, I've seen him walking away uh, from uh, our commitment to uh, confronting the national debt. I've seen him uh, starting to, to shy away from a, a commitment to the sanctity of human life. And this last week is his reversal uh, on, on getting tough on China uh, and, and supporting our administration's effort uh, to force uh, a sale uh, of, uh, of uh, ByteDance TikTok Why do you think uh, he did that? Why do you think he had that reversal on that before we go, sir? Well, I, 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 can't, I can't speculate on it. But what I can tell you is, is that in each of these cases, uh, Donald Trump is pursuing and articulating an agenda that is at odds with the conservative agenda that, that we governed on during our four years. And that's why I cannot in good conscience uh, endorse Donald Trump in this campaign. But let me right. say one last thing. That okay. being said, look, Republican primary voters have made it clear, Martha, uh, 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 you know, who they're for in this election. What I'm going to spend the rest of this year on is talking about what we should be for, and that is the, the broad, mainstream, okay. conservative agenda that's defined our party and always made America strong and prosperous and free. Well, understood. Um, I, I got two seconds, but who are you going to vote for uh, in November? Well, like, like most Americans, I'm I'm going to keep uh, keep my vote to myself. But uh, uh, you know, would you I'm vote for President Biden? I would never vote for Joe Biden. But uh, how I vote when that curtain closes is uh, that'll be for me. But uh, are you looking look, for a I, third party emergent? No, look, I, look what what I can tell you what I can tell you is that where I'm going to spend my energies uh, is is on making sure that. Uh, my fellow Republicans, independents, and many, many Democrats around the country know that it is a commitment to limited government in the Constitution, a commitment to a strong defense and American leadership in the world, a commitment to traditional values that's always made this country prosperous and free. And I'm going to advocate for You're that. You're not going to run as a, as a third party candidate of any kind, are you, sir? Or no, are you? I'm a, I'm a Republican, Martha. All right. Uh, Vice President Pence, thank you very much. Always good to talk to you, sir. We'll see you soon. You too. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.